So let me know whenever you're ready to go. I, I, I got a bit, I got a bit to do. I'm ready. Uh, well, I just wanted to wish you a happy international podcast day, Paul. How are you doing? Happy international podcast day. I can't believe we have our own international podcast day now. That's, that's, that's tremendous. So uh, I was just waiting by the door. I was wondering when your gift for me is going to arrive. Why would I buy anything for you for International Podcast Day? Well, I just thought we've had this podcast now for, what is this, week eight now? I just would have thought that we would have had. Uh, I, I didn't buy anything for Will for International Podcast Day. Well, that I share a lot more video clips than Will does. We'll just put it that way, <laughs> of the podcast. Here we go. It's a competition, ladies and gentlemen. It always is between XFL and Will House. Uh, so I, I do want to start today though. And I was thinking about this this morning. You, I, I know you woke up, you're feeling a little under the weather. We appreciate you doing the podcast today. You have to be flying high this week. Why am I flying high this week? Because your boy, Bobby Roode came back on Monday, oh wrestled God. your other boy, Drew McIntyre, WWE heavyweight title match in the main event of raw. Were you going crazy? I watched this this morning. I thought Paul had to have been losing his mind. No. I'm not going crazy. Bobby Roode is not WWE world title material. So why would I be going crazy? Well, uh, we all know you're a Bobby Roode stand. So no, I'm not. Uh, anyway, I, I do think there's going to be a little bit of uh, content filling today. It's a little, little light in the XFL, but there is a bunch of stuff that we can talk about. I've got my list. I've got my list as always. Uh, Google Doc. We'll, we'll go, we'll go through it. But uh, yeah, I was watching Mark on the news hub this morning and he goes, yeah, you know, in the next week or two, uh, we're really hoping. And I go, Mark, we are all with you. We are really hoping that this this, this thing breaks out in the next couple of weeks. I will tell you what. Mm -hmm. um, but no, we got a lot of stuff today. Did you see what I sent over? Was there anything that, that really struck your uh, interest so far? Well, first and foremost, I mean, on the heels of what happened, uh, let's see, Wednesday night, well, Tuesday night, I'm sorry, Tuesday night, uh, The Rock endorsed Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, of course, that that caused a lot of people to go, what? And get upset about that and say, and I've seen people that say they're not going to watch the XFL now because the rock is getting into politics. Okay. I saw that too. I've, I also got, I posted our video of the rock tearing down the metal gate from his door, from his driveway. You know, we, we broke it all down last week. Yeah. People giving the middle finger to my post. I mean, this is like the furthest thing. This? Huh? Did you delete those middle fingers on that post? I just said, you know, it's just about the football here. We're really, and, and, and that's the whole thing. And I don't want to get like super into it on the podcast because I know that you get enough of it, it kind of in your normal life. And this is really like supposed to be not that. But yeah, if you're not going to watch the XFL because The Rock is is endorsing Joe Biden, then then uh, I don't really have anything to say to you. Uh, well, here's, here's, my, here's my point. And I'm going to make this really clear. For the people that think endorsing a democrat candidate like these the same people call democrats and liberals snowflakes and then you're going to turn around and say i'm not going to watch the xfo because the rock endorsed joe biden that makes you a snowflake and that's all i'm going to say about that because i don't get i don't want to get super political and point fingers here i i do that over on the other podcast pretty much i call it stupidity all the time and this is stupid um but yeah i mean that's what it is. The, the one thing I wanted to take from this is, and, and like I said, not to be political, whatever side you want to take, 12 million views of that Instagram video from on the Rocks page, 4 million views of that video I looked this morning on the Facebook page of the Rock sharing that, plus all the different reshares and everything. That's 16 million views of those XFL helmets on the Rocks desk. On the bookshelf. So like, I don't want to, that's all I'm thinking about. That's all I'm thinking about is XFL visibility. I don't want to get into any of this stuff. We want to talk about football, but uh, 16 million views on the XFL helmets is, is all I'm thinking about. That's, that's a glass half full way to look at it. That's what we got to do. I mean, it's 2020. We got to do glass half full. We got to find some kind of optimism in this. Yeah. Crazy year. Yeah. So I'll yeah. just keep it. I'll keep it radio friendly and say crazy year. I was going to say something else. Messed up. Another term for messed up. But let's let's keep it moving. 
Um, before we get too deep in the podcast, I do want to do this. Yeah, I want to plug the the mask giveaway. Uh, we're doing the, you know, we're giving away the five masks each week for people reviewing the podcast. Uh, we had some awesome reviews come in this week. So we, we all those orders have been shipped out. We really appreciate everybody uh, leaving reviews for the podcast at ratethispodcast.com slash XFL. And uh, I wanted to read some of them on the podcast just to show that this is, is a real thing and these people are, are going to get mass. And uh, I told everybody to send over... Um, you know, photos and stuff so we can share them. But we had Wedge777. He said, a great podcast for XFL news. If you're an XFL fan, you have to listen. Plus, you can actually hear what they are saying, which is uh, goes into our, you know, our audio fidelity talk on uh, on some of the podcasts about some of the interviews. Um, James Larson, a fun podcast for two guys who love the XFL. Always enjoy listening to the show. Uh, Russ Pavlik. Sorry, I butchered your last name. Love the XFL. Can't wait for it to return. These guys are entertaining and help fill the gap with interesting topics. Until we have the XFL restart again, keep rolling. Uh, go Defenders. I can't endorse that with our um, thoughts about Cardell Jones, but go Defenders. And uh, Kev, uh, Kev, uh, Kev New 360, great podcast about all things XFL, plus a little pro wrestling talk. Never hurt anybody. Keep it up, lads. So thank you guys so much. All your masks are going out. And again, this week, uh, we're doing five masks for the first five people that, that do reviews. Uh, ratethispodcast.com slash XFL. And uh, we really appreciate all the support. So I just wanted to get that out before we get too deep into all the shenanigans I got planned. Lads. Was the guy British? Uh, no, but he, uh, no. Oh, yeah, he was because he was the international one. He, some, yeah, so he is because he messaged me and said if we could ship the mass international. So maybe, he, maybe he's been to a WrestleMania that we've been to. Maybe there's a possibility. <laughs> maybe he's the guy that says, guys. Um, <laughs> moving on, moving on. I'm in, a, I'm in a very, sh- I'm in a very sharp mood this That's morning. That's okay. What, what do you think about the NFL stuff? Just came out this morning. Titans are going to play on Tuesday or, uh, or, yeah, Monday or Tuesday. Um, well, I mean, here we go. <laughs> like basically here we go. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised it took till week four for us to get some kind of COVID breakout, but thank goodness it, it, it took that long. And the fact that it took that long is a good sign. It's optimism. It's okay. Well, guess what? They might have a way to control this and to compare, look, when hockey went into the bubble, they issued over 30,000 tests over the course of the bubble. And guess how many cases they had? Zero. I mean, something to be said about a bubble. And now, now Major League Baseball is officially in their bubble. Uh, they have shrunk everything down to where uh, the, better, the teams with the better records are hosting the first round of the wild card. Then they're going to be locked down in L.A., San Diego, Houston, and uh, Dallas. For the remainder, I know it's Arlington. Arlington is Dallas, same thing. The remainder of the playoffs to make sure that we do get a viable person, a viable winner of the World Series. So basically at this point, like it's good that the X, the NFL's only had one positive ca- a few positive cases so yeah, far. Yeah, one kind of outbreak with these. Yeah, one outbreak. With the four, and then there's a, uh, some training staff or whatever. Uh, that's that's fortunate to say the least. So um, I think that, that that's not going to deter anything. And if we average one of these outbreaks a month, uh, we'll, we'll get a full season. We'll definitely get a full season. And that's, you know, that's to be expected, especially the fact that we haven't had any news on XFL 3.0 or 2.1, whatever we want to call it. Uh, the, the more that we have football and not have to worry about the XFL coming in and saving us, so to speak, from a footballless ex- existence, um, that's that's a good thing. And of course, the NCAA, the last power conference, has decided to go ahead with a seven-game schedule starting in October, I believe. That is the Pac-12. They're only going to play seven games. Uh, makes you wonder how they're going to how they're going to do bowl season if they're going to do bowl season at all. There's too much money to be made in bowl season. But then again, how can they make money in bowl season without people coming in and watching the bowls? There's so many questions about the college sport right now. And uh, I, I'm just happy that, you know, they found a way to do it with, you know, a limited schedule. I still think it's. Well, I don't get the point of coming in for seven games and just like, I don't know. I, I'm just not a big fan of watching stuff just to watch like, oh, I just need, you know, if, if we can do the, the NFL season or hockey or whatever, but I'm just not a big fan of like, we're just, well, we're just doing seven games like that. Sure. It's like, what's the point? 
I think the point is just to maybe it's more to serve the student athletes to give them draft stock for the NFL. That could be the reason. There's there's so many Pac-12 kids that go to the NFL from USC specifically. Let's USC and Oregon are the big eater schools in the NFL. Although I got to shout out Nick Foles for coming in for the Bears the other day and and rallying them back from. I I, I don't mean to talk about the NFL so much, but what's wrong with the Falcons holding a lead? They lost in the Super Bowl after a 28-3 lead. They lost the last two games after holding 15-point leads. The Falcons did. And Nick Foles from the University of Arizona in my hometown led the Bears back against the Falcons. Anyway, I digress. All, all I remember about Sunday football is that Dorothy and I went and had brunch and watched the the Seahawks, you know, do the Seahawk duty and, and, and have a lead and then almost lose everything. Uh $188 spent on brunch watching that game. That was how long we were there watching the game. Well, five, did, five crafts of mimosas coming our way for the brunch. If you did that four times, if you do that for the next month, next three weeks of the month. I know where you're going. Don't start. Don't start. You'd still, you'd still pay more in mimosas and brunch then. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, no, but it was good. It was a good week at NFL. But yeah, it, that was I definitely it's scary news coming out now, right? You know, it's been the three weeks. Now we're going into four, um, you know, uh, and with the NHL, I wanted to talk to you, too. You know, they just ended. We crowned. Do, do you crown the champion in the NHL? Yeah, Stanley Cup. But, but I mean, is that what they call it? You, you crown. Yeah. OK, you you award the the Stanley Cup. Uh, I saw Jeff. Uh, Jeff, I'm never going to get his last name. Mandy Ocelli. Uh, Maglio Chetty. Maglio Chetty. He tweeted, like you said, you know, 33,000 um, tests done since the since the NHL was in the bubble and not one uh, not one positive case, which is is crazy remarkable. You know, every every time they, they award the Stanley Cup, every time the Stanley Cup playoffs is over in Batman, Gary Batman, the commissioner of the NHL hands over the cup to the winning team. The crowd boos Gary Batman because commissioners are heels. <laughs> they are heels of the, of the professional sports world. And this was the first time that I think a commissioner deserved a little bit of a lot of credit, to be honest with you. He did it right. He got it right. And uh, Adam Silver's doing the same thing in, in the NBA. Um, again, Rob Manfred, we, uh, I, I have this stain in, in deep in my heart for Rob Manfred and MLB um, because of what happened with the Astros. Um, but I think, I think it's like, it's, it's a commendable thing to actually, you know, sports are a reward of a functioning society and our lives have felt pretty empty since February. And this is kind of making us feel like, like, like it's a, like it's a way to t- just take our mind off everything. Even though there's no fans, I'm still enjoying what I'm seeing. I'm still enjoying baseball. I'm still, I, I didn't watch much hockey because my, my team isn't in it. So I'm still glad that the sports have left, left us feeling some kind of normalcy. And uh, for, I guess, congratulations to Tampa Bay on winning the Stanley cup. I hate the fact that it's in Florida, which is now the COVID capital of the world, but Hey, you know, Tampa had the best team going down the stretch. So, uh, yeah, it was nice. It was nice to feel like you could be at brunch and watch football. And, you know, our, the bar that we go to is, you know, really socially distant and, you know, you got to go up and you know, order at the bar and, you know, you have masks on if you're not, you know, seated and you're know, really safe, but it, it was nice to be able to go out and feel like we could, you know, sit and watch football for the, for a change. And, you know, like you said, just have do something to do. I like to do this. Gosh, just so nice just to be able to like go do something and just not be, not be sitting at home. So I'm jealous. I mean, we we're still, you know, we're eating outside still here in California, but there are so many things like, you know, I'm, I'm a big mark for the Alamo draft house and I haven't seen a movie in the Alamo draft house. Probably, probably the last thing I went to see at the Alamo draft house was like a special preview of a TV show that, uh, that I watch. <laughs> did you have, a, were you trying to edit yourself or did you have a stroke there mid podcast? Uh, let's not make fun of strokes. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I, I, I don't know if I, you know, Screw it. Uh, Nitty and I went to see a special preview of a TV show we watch. And that's, that's the last thing I went to at the Elmo draft house. Oh, so there you go. Yep. Uh, 
Uh, did you see uh, The Rock making news, uh, good news on Twitter, uh, posting about he had this fancy XFL uh, football operations workshop on, uh, and he's got his own um, customized uh, notepad with the Brahma Bull on it. And then it had a cool like uh, football operations workshop. But talking about the XFL, talking about uh, you know, big announcements coming, talking about finding the right partners, and saying that uh, there's going to be uh, some announcements coming soon. When do you think that will be, Paul? Because the podcast schedule would really like to know. Yeah, the podcast schedule would love to know when those announcements are coming because you know I feel like you know we're filling sometimes. We're fill, 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 fill. Uh, I think they're probably coming at the. They might be coming at the end of October, to be honest with you. I, I hate to say it, but I think uh, unless unless the crap hits the fan and we have an NFL season that has a massive COVID outbreak and they go, okay, we'll stop everything. I think we're waiting till October to get some kind of uh, XFL news. So I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping it's sooner than later, but I'm thinking it's more like the end of October. Uh, we had talked about uh, kind of, well, I had talked about kind of October, you know, last year they did the XFL draft and, uh, you know, then they got into training camp and everything. I had a call from, uh, Van, the man, our number one fan. And uh, he's told me some stuff off the record, but he did say that he thinks that, um, you could, we could still roll in December, you know, St- Sam Schwartz, Dean Schwartzman, I butchering the name, uh, with the, the guy that made all the rules for the XFL, he right. was on, uh, yeah, I know we talked last week about, he had said that they had six weeks of, um, are you kidding me? They're doing construction in my driveway. I actually can hear it this time. Yeah. Uh, so he did, um, he talked about how, you know, six weeks of getting, you know, players off the couch, you know, to play in. He was just on the XFL show, uh, another podcast, uh, and it was a fascinating interview, but Basically, with that with that six week uh, leg time, Van thinks you know even in December, you know even if we did draft in December and then just rolled through because we did the you know last year we did the draft in October, kind of everyone hunkered down for two months and then kind of went to the training camps and everything in in Houston and then kind of rolled into the season. Right. And he thinks you could still do you know December and kind of get rid of that leg time with that six weeks and still be ready to go. What do you think about starting a little later than October for the XFL draft? Um, I think it's anything to get news uh, news for us to talk about and news about the rebirth of the league would be great. So maybe maybe it comes in sooner. Maybe you know that's it'd be great to see them pick up like week one right as the Super Bowl ends. Week one. XFL's next week after Super Bowl ends. That'd be great. That'd be great timing. So, you know, doing like the the six weeks thing, that would put probably everything would need to be in place by mid December in terms of locations and stuff. And again, who knows? You know, they might they might relocate teams too. I we've talked about how much of a pit MetLife is. It was rated one of the worst stadiums in the NFL, if not the worst. I saw that. Yeah, you did see that. Um, so again, you know, uh, I think that maybe it, maybe it comes sooner than the end of October because honestly, um, there's so much they need to do. There is so much they need to do. They need to hire people. They need they need to hire people back. So who knows? One thing uh, they had hypothesized and uh, on the mark on the on the XFL News Hub, and, and they were talking to about how. You know, last year and the whole big thing was kicking it off right after the Super Bowl. You know, this year it would be like February 9th or whatever it is. Last year it was the 13th. I think we were in D.C., you know, first ever XFL game. But, uh, you know, that's not set in stone, right? I mean, I know I know that they do that kind of it, it's before baseball. It's right after the Super Bowl. But but I want to ask you as someone that watches baseball, you know, let's say we all come back normal time with baseball again. What would you say to starting the XFL after that, after March Madness? People hypothesized this year that, you know, they the XFL was going to get creamed in the ratings come March Madness and all that stuff. What do you think about, you know, delaying it and then maybe doing like a late spring into the summer league? Is that just dumb or what do you think about that? I think temperature wise, that might be dumb. Um, it's, you know, those are the the reason that the reason football is played during the, f- the fall months is because it's the fall sport. And I think you kind of need to, 
capture that element of colder weather too. And I think it just goes hand in hand with football. So I'm not sure a spring thing would, I mean, cause there's, there's hydration issues. You hear about it all the time when they start uh, training camps in August, there's a lot of kids in, in colleges and, and the NFL that kind of get a little bit of a hydration issue. So imagine doing that over a, a three month period and having to constantly deal with that. There's a reason why they've picked uh, football as a kind of fall winter sport. And there's no guarantees. There's going to be March madness because we don't know how many basketball, how many schools are going to be playing, how many conferences are going to allow their schools to be playing. We don't know. So there's, there's a good chance that there's no sports, major sports that take up our time on the TV during March. And I think, you know, having a February, March season and then concluding in April, best way to go about it. Best way to go about it. So I'm not sure a late spring, early summer XFL season will be good. How do you think that they would hold up against? How were, how were the ratings this year for baseball? Decent. I mean, I think more decent. I think there's been, there's definitely been better ratings for baseball because people, the only way you can watch baseball is on TV. Um, you can't go to the park. And I need to say that too. I have the MLB TV package, right? I, I pay for that because my team is out of market. Um, I am frustrated, not for myself, but for Dodgers fans, because there are some Dodgers fans that don't have Sportsnet or DirecTV, don't have Spectrum, I should say, or DirecTV. So they get the MLB TV package and they're blacked out. They can't watch the games. And that's the only way you can see a Dodgers game is if you have Spectrum or DirecTV. So I think that Major League Baseball, again, messed this one up and didn't say, okay, we're, we're going to get rid of the blackouts for this year because we understand everybody's going to watch these games differently. Um, I still think people, I think the numbers were better this year than they have been on an average year because that's the only way you can watch the games. But, you know, who knows? I haven't really been paying attention to the numbers. Just I've been paying attention to the numbers on the field in terms of like stats and stuff. Uh, when you say blackout, is that because like normally they say, hey, you should be at the game. Like we're going to black it out. And yeah, that's stupid that they did. Bl- I didn't realize that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, I mean, it, it it's a it's a contract that Spectrum had with the Dodgers uh, probably years ago before. Uh, what's his name? Court, the court, whoever, whoever owned the Dodgers before the current group, which includes Magic Johnson. Uh, he, that guy signed a contract with the Spectrum Sportsnet to go exclusively on cable. So man, that meant like if you didn't have Spectrum, you didn't watch games. And it kind of hurt in terms of fan support. Like kids were coming up, um, you know, kids were coming up and they didn't really have a, they couldn't really just watch the game. If they, if their parents didn't have Spectrum, they weren't watching the game. They really weren't in touch with Dodgers baseball. So um, it just, it's, it hurt the, it hurt the Dodgers. I think tremendously. I mean, not in the pocketbook because they got paid a lot of money to do this, but in terms of like their overall fan support, um, they, they've just been on spectrum and then they've just recently signed a deal. Probably it was la- this last season to where spectrum is now putting them on direct TV as well. Um, I know that there was a local TV station that carried a few games here and there down the stretch. That was cool. That was nice to give, you know, to give people that didn't afford, couldn't afford cable or didn't want to buy cable. That was nice to give them that those those ten games a season, but I just I think that um, that kind of stuff, you know, I lost my train of thought. That's it's just crazy. I can't believe that they would keep that this year. I just figure with with COVID and everything, you'd want as many people watching this stuff. You know, we fight to have it back. I just that's crazy to me. I had no idea that they would do that. And I think still doing blackouts, and I just I I I shake my head. And last night, people were upset. uh, You know. Last was Tuesday night. People were upset about the fact that not everyone has TV. Not everyone has cable. So people were popping on the MLB TV app. They paid a hundred dollars for the year. People are popping on that app. And guess what? The games are blacked out on the app still, still to this day. And it's just like, you need to spread the sport. Yeah. No blackouts. No, that's crazy. That's the one piece of advice I think I would give. Uh, the Rock and its te- and his team do not black things out for local markets that don't go to games. For example, if if MetLife is 
only got 5,000 people in it watching the game. Don't black the game out for people at home. Just don't do it. I will, I will say, speaking of, uh, speaking of, um, uh, you know, uh, preemptions or whatever on TV, I remember back when, uh, the dragons were playing, I think it was, it must've been the, the third, maybe it was the fourth week. It was cause you know, they were in DC and then they were at home, uh, two weeks. And then it was like that fourth week. And I remember that that was the the same day that Saturday morning was the first patient that they got the COVID in, uh, in, in like Kirkland or whatever at the, at the senior home. And I remember like we were livid because, you know, here they were doing COVID, you know, uh, preempting the game. You know, we couldn't watch a game. Like I bought YouTube TV and all this and thinking like how mad we were that they weren't doing that. And now to th- think of like how big this issue is and like that I was we were like, this is so dumb. Why would they ever do this? Like, we need to watch the game. And now, like, in retrospect, it's like the biggest thing in the history of the world. And here we were complaining that we couldn't watch the Dragons uh, lose to, would have been lose to, I can't even remember. I can't even remember the, the first world, it, That's the definition yeah. of first yeah. world problems. It's yeah. like, damn it, I can't get my, I was, I was pissed up. They messed up my latte the other day at Starbucks. And I was thinking, took a deep breath and calmed down. Then I was like, there are bigger things than them putting whipped cream on my latte. Not very many bigger things, but I hate whipped cream, man. I hate it. Uh, I want to talk about this article from uh, uh, Mickey Wynn on uh, XFL Newsroom uh, talking about the the play, the pay for the players. And because uh, I told him he posted this yesterday, I said we'd be sure to talk about this on the podcast. And uh, talking about how, you know, last year, and and I think we've talked about this in weeks past, there was all this controversy about, um, you know, like Brandon Silvers got paid a quarter million dollars to you know lose games. And then all the guys under him got... You keep crapping on Brandon Silvers, man. Got... um, uh, (laughs) I hope Brandon is not as soft and sensitive as uh, Cardell Jones. As Mr. Jones. (laughs) I tweeted that uh, the other day and and, uh, because... Every time the and I think I've said this before on the podcast. Every time the Rock shares anything, it always shows me that Brandon Silver's liked it, and so I tweeted, and BJ Daniels liked my tweet, and I said, "Tell the Rock that we don't need Brandon Silver's in our football league," and BJ Daniels liked it. So I'm just I'm just saying, but anyway, but they're talking here. Uh, they're talking about the you know the breakdown of the pay. They're talking about how you know what do we do this year? Do you do a tiered system? I think. You know, originally they had talked about doing a tiered system when the XFL was, you know, competing with the AAF. And then it was like once the AAF went away, Vince, you know, tight pocket Vince was like, well, we don't like have to pay anybody now. There's no, um, you know, there's no alternative, right? Yeah. What, how would Vince tight ever? Pockets? No. But I mean, what, what do you think about just the overall idea uh, of paying players more? You know, th- it was so convoluted where they got like $30,000. And then if your team won a game, then you know, you would get these bonuses. Or if you played and you won, but like, you know, if, if your team stunk and you never played, like you wouldn't, you do, you know, you do, you would get paid significantly less. And, and, and how does that compare maybe to, to other sports that you watch that know more about? I mean, the angels absolutely stink and Mike Trout is making a fortune. Um, so I, I, I guess I shouldn't say they stink. They were, they were kind of in the playoff hunt for a little while. Um, I, I, they do need to change their pay scale. It just seems weird that they're paying on wins and losses. And, you know, the, I know that doing that under the guise of, for the love of football, blah, blah, blah. And I, there's a middle ground between what Vince is doing and what the players might want. There's a middle ground there. And I'm sure with someone who is, has the mind of a football player like the rock who, again, the famous story is he left the Canadian football league with $7 in his pocket, seven bucks in his pocket. I think the rock is going to take care of people. Um, I think that there's, there's a way to make more money that Vince wasn't thinking about. And especially with the rock behind it and picking the right venues and the right places to hold games and the right, you know, there's a, there's a better chance that the players are going to be taken care of, not to the level of the NFL clearly because they're not NFL caliber players right now. Um, but do you put your body on the line for more pay? Not, quite as much as you want, but for more pay with the opportunity 
to be discovered by the NFL? That's the question because we, we do see uh, XFL players on rosters right now and they wouldn't be there if not for the XFL and the uh, exposure they got. Well, that's the thing too. And I mean, we're basically the XFL is existing more, more or less to, to give players tape, to get to the NFL you know, they're going to be playing their hearts out no matter what. I mean, I don't think you need to incentivize whatever it was, $1,500 a win or something. To, like, I think they're going to be going. I don't think there was one criticism of anything with the XFL was, well, the players really weren't trying hard enough or didn't care enough. I mean, that just wasn't at all, you know, of anything you want to leverage against Vince and, and, and say that he did wrong or didn't do, you know, uh, all the support staff, all of the players, everybody was really trying their hardest. I don't think that that was at all a question about anything. No, it wasn't at all. Definitely not at all. Um, other things you wanted to talk about included um, this, uh, uh, I guess there was an update for the bankruptcy filing where uh, Vance has amended his secured claim from $9 million to $8.25 million and added ESPN and Fox uh, to the creditor claim sheet. Yeah, I think part of that, and, and some of the some of the writers picked up on that, uh, and, and their take was, you know, does that mean that the, the league is going to try to get back in with those TV partners? Where we had talked in previous weeks about them, you know, solidifying, figuring out the finalizing what they owed, like. Raymond James Stadium and the Houston TDECU. I always butcher that. But, um, you know, if, if they're trying to make whole some of these TV partners that maybe they owed money to or whatever, does that mean that they're willing to get back in, you know, trying to get back in with them? Because we need TV partners. I mean, without without the right TV partner, the XFL literally doesn't mean anything, right? Right. right. But I don't think those TV partners are going to necessarily – they're going to differentiate that they're dealing with a different management group altogether. And I don't think it really matters what Vince's dealings are with them in terms of what the new XFL ownership groups dealings are with them. This is a separate topic. This is a separate, this, this is completely now separate, separate from what the XFL is doing now. So I don't think this is, there's, there's a correlation there. Sure. There might be a small, small teeny one, but I don't think any court filing that Vince is doing now is going to affect a relationship that the Redbird group and, and Danny and the rock have with potential networks. But I know ABC wants to get involved and that's, you know, that's ESPN of course. Um, but yeah, I don't think that I honestly don't think that there's a, there's a correlation. Well, and I mean, and The Rock's doing, you know, he's got Titan Games on NBC. I mean, he's making movies for Netflix. I mean, he's got, I saw it posted today. I don't, I don't know the network, but he has a, a, like a pilot coming out in the fall, like a new TV show. And then he's producing some documentary about like the soccer players being lost at sea or something. I mean, the, he's got a ton of different stuff going on. Like, I'm pretty sure that the people that he works with, the agents that he works with to develop all of this stuff. Yeah, they're not, they don't care like what Vince and them and what antiquated, TV deal that they had going on, you know, and it was, a, it was honestly, it was a crappy deal for the XFL anyway, you know, they were paying to produce the content, right. And then they were being hosted on the networks. And then I think they were splitting the ads. And I was trying to explain this to Dorothy the other day that it was kind of like how AEW, I think with their original TV deal was that way too, that they were, you know, they were producing the content for TNT and then TNT was hosting it and they were splitting whatever. And then, you know, they did that for six months or whatever. And now what, what was it like a $30 million or some huge deal that AEW signed, you know, and, and now because, you know, you kind of prove it and then, and then you do it. And so I think um, maybe the XFL doesn't even want to be in with all that antiquated because they were on like a three year plan with that. I mean, that wasn't going to be the XFL wasn't going to get paid from any of those TV networks or anything for, you know, like year four when they renegotiated. So I would think that hopefully the rock and them can, can negotiate better. Maybe whenever you, and this is like, it's more like a WCW kind of thing where, um, the, the big, the big difference that we talk, that they talk about when they talk about the downfall of WCW is that it was a television company putting on a wrestling program where the WWE was a wrestling company making a television program. There's a difference there. There's a, there's a different way to approach it. And it boggles my mind that Vince didn't look at him being a, a, uh, a uh, football television program 
And it seemed like he kind of took a WCW ish type deal where he was taking more of the risk on and almost in, in sense buying TV time and then giving away ad space. Like, would that have been a better deal just to buy the TV time outright and go, okay, we're going to take all the ads because we're buying the time on the network. Would that have been a more expensive? Would that have been a more lucrative? Who knows? But um, I think that that's the, that's the, that's that, that's the thing they need to get is definitely if they're providing content. They need to be paid for their content. If, if there's ad space, that's what the networks need to have. They need to have all of the ad space and then just pay for the XFL. Just pay for it. That's that's the smart way to go about it. And that, uh, by the way, on on the the note about the uh, Young Rock TV show, it's going to be on NBC. So yeah, see, and I mean that, that was the thing too is if they get a new TV deal, it's got to be better than you know because those first couple weeks when they were on Fox and ABC or whatever, but then you know by by like week four, it's on you know ESPN number four or so. I mean, I couldn't even find them some of the time. And you're like, I'm a pretty savvy TV guy, and if I can't get these stupid episodes up, you know that's why you know, they're like, well, but you know week five the ratings were only seven hundred thousand people it's like yeah because they were on like a super obscure you know yeah, they were on the ocho yeah i mean but i you know you have to make it accessible for people it goes back to the mlb conversation you have to make it accessible for people to watch the stuff and if you have it on you know what the heck are they going to put on nbc in february right now i mean i know we talked last week i mean you're like soccer Premier League, Premier League Soccer. Okay, but but I mean, like we've got you know Mass Singer spinoffs with Ken Jeong. You know, I can I can hear your voice or see your voice or whatever. You know, and, and we're in September. I mean, we're in September. What are we going to do in January, in February? In, I mean, we need. There's got to be content stuff. Yeah. because Hollywood's just barely getting back to work. We're going to need content. It's almost it will It's almost like a writer strike happened for a year. We need content, so. This would be a perfect way for them just to have like a, a, a ready-made program. Like, you know, everything is in place if they just have it, you know, if they hire the people back that didn't, you know, and there's a good chance that these people that got let go still don't have jobs because of COVID. They hire the people back. They, the infrastructure is still there. You can improve it a couple places here and there. But I love, you know, we loved what they did with interviewing players like right on the field after it happened Talk about what was going through your mind during that that touchdown run. That stuff was great. That stuff was awesome to get inside the players' minds right there on the field after the moments happen. There's so many things they could do to make it compelling to where people are going to tune in. Especially, I think Americans took sports for granted during this time. And once sports came back, there was there's been a bigger outcry for the positive nature of sports being in our society than just people taking it for granted going, Oh, the baseball game's on. I might watch it. Who knows? Now it's been like, Oh, it's on. I'm watching it. I know I've been that way. So maybe that's the same thing that's going to happen here. Kim is, well, and you know, and one person that we, we, we would love to see hired back at the XFL is our good fan, uh, good friend, Ryan Gustafson. Still yes. haven't heard back from him. We're trying to get him on the podcast. Come on the podcast, Ryan, please. Ryan, we, we, I'll, I'll tweet you again. I don't want to get blocked. I don't want to get blocked like Cardell, but. I don't think Ryan's as soft as Cardell Jones is. I don't think anybody's that soft, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, can, can I ask a question real quick? Yes. On this, young, on this Young Rock show. Yes. If there is a Roman Reigns character, are you going to watch it? Or are you going to turn it off? Damn, can I know? I felt I, well. I'm not saying I would watch it anyway. I don't. Is this like a Young Sheldon spinoff with The Rock? It's like it's like everybody hates Chris, but it's The Rock. I guess maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I mean, I'll check it out, but I'm not. I'm not a big sitcom guy. You aren't. No, it's true. not. I mean, you watch you watch BS reality TV. That's your that's your jam. You you tweet about The Bachelor so much, and survivor and big brother big brother worst season in the worst season in 22 years we have going on right now well it's 2020 so everything's the worst I mean, right now dude. you couldn't you couldn't ask for a worse season than big brother right now <laughs> by the way did you end up watching the roman reigns jay uso match from i did yeah uh, pain and i watched it we watched uh what did you think honestly what did you think Put your bias aside. I know we hate yeah, Roman, but yeah. put your bias aside. Here, here's what I think, and this is this is really because um, because 
to set up the to set up and you, and you gotta quit uh quit picking your <laughs> i've got like a ingrown nail i know dude. what did do it after not on the video podcast. oh my god um you know it's 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 hard because the whole thing about the usos was they're these twins right they got picked you know roman whatever and you know it was always like who which one's jay which one's jimmy because they're twins right like you can never and that was always and he's got this chip on his shoulder and roman was always pushed as the main guy and it's it's really funny now that when you take because roman was in the shield had the the cool ring gear had the cool music had the cool everything got to keep all of that when the shield broke up got to keep the music got to keep everything and now when you when you strip all that away and Roman comes out with pants on and his Samoan tattoos and it it looks a lot like Jay Uso and I'm sitting there and I'm like it, it, it was like a roll of the dice that you could have picked any one of those guys and put the money behind it you know if Vince had put as much money behind Zack Ryder or Jay Uso or anybody in the world I I feel like Roman Reigns does not have anything that intangible that puts him above anybody else that you would put that much money and time behind. You don't think the ooh stuff is money? No, but I mean, it, like, that's the thing. It's like, okay, if we, you, okay, like this podcast, okay, right. you could take a million dollars and and put, you know, Facebook ads and Google ads and everything on this podcast and get it you would get it to whatever level and you could take that same million dollars and take it to any other XFL podcast and get this. It's just because they put six freaking years and every ounce of energy that Vince has into Roman Reigns, but you could have done that to any of the Usos. I think they have just as much charisma. I think they're just as good. I mean, that's not a knock on Roman so much as it is. I think they're just as adequate as any of the other wrestlers that you could have put. I mean, unless you're like Stone Cold or The Rock, there's not that much intangible that's different than a lot of the guys besides what Vince wants to do. Okay, so this goes to something that uh, Ryback had said, and I can't believe we're going to reference Ryback right now. And maybe, are we done talking... XFL because we can no, just I got a lot of more XFL stuff. Oh great. Um <laughs> I can't wait to see what you have planned yeah. next. Uh Ryback had said Vince now is in a in a in a space where he just wants to make the logo the most over thing about the company. So yeah. is Vince gonna really allow this to happen where you get a Roman Reigns who is going to be the guy? Because I mean Let's talk about Cena. Cena has been the last guy. We think, you know, we talk about being the guy. Cena was the last guy. And now look what Cena's doing. He's, he doesn't need it anymore. He's done. Yeah. But, but he pushed Roman to be the guy. We just didn't accept him. Right. So, I mean, but it wasn't Vince putting, I mean, I think except for Roman, I think he wants someone he can control on top, but I don't think Vince is opposed to pushing people. I think he would have loved if Roman would have got over like anybody else did. They just, he just didn't. There's other people that, that, that he could have. Anybody, literally anybody else in the world. Even Drew McIntyre. Yeah, I was, I mean, okay. yeah. I mean, you could have put Bobby Roode over freaking. I mean, you could have, if you would have put as much time and energy behind Roman Reigns or behind Bobby Roode as you did Roman Reigns, it, it doesn't matter. When you put that much money behind somebody, it doesn't matter how good or bad they are. If you would put that much money and effort behind Adolf Ziggler, people loved Dolph, people loved Dolph Ziggler, but whatever. Well, Let's go back to XFL news. So people are like, oh, those WWE talk. Well, we'll get to that. So I want to talk about a couple other things. Uh, James at the newsroom has a whole article about what the XFL is going to miss with Oliver Luck being gone. And basically, that just makes me cry and want to be sad. And uh, we, we still have no update on the, uh, the Oliver Luck lawsuit yet. You know, I know we're waiting on pins and needles for that. But I mean, it just stinks. You know, it just makes us feel crappy again. You know, we saw Oliver Luck on ESPN a couple weeks ago, not talking about the XFL. And so, James, this was just kind of like a obituary for Oliver Luck and just that you want to find someone likable and as smart as Oliver. It's just like kind of lamenting your ex-girlfriend being gone. Right. I don't think you sent me that in the Google Doc. And if you did, that, <laughs> that didn't come up. So maybe I, I'm not looking at the same article you're saying. Could you just summarize for me? Yeah, it just says, you know, what will the XFL miss due to Oliver Luck being gone? Uh, it talks about the canceling of the season. It's missing his presence. 
uh, you know, uh, he, he the fact that he had the mind for football, and I think that that's what they're talking about. And the other thing, the other article I wanted to touch on is, you know, the sources say that Jeffrey Pollock is going to be, geez, Louise. Yeah. Sources are saying, why don't you vamp for a minute? I'm going to close this window. All right, I'll vamp for a minute. Um, geez, Louise, we got to find a new thing to say because that came up on another podcast that I have, and uh, just you know, we got we got to find another. Another uh, like uh, another exclamation. Anyway, okay. um, so they're talking about Jeffrey Pollock. Sources are saying you know he's with the league still, right? Is he going to come back as the president? Is he going to come back as the commissioner? Is he going to come back? You know, he was on the Zoom call. Danny had the big Zoom call. We broke that down last week, and they're talking about how you know if Jeffrey Pollock sticks around, if he's the president, he just doesn't have the football mind that Oliver Luck had. Where Oliver Luck kind of had that. The, the respect and the mindset, you know, from everybody. Okay. Oliver Luck's going to do this. You know, Jeffrey Pollock was into like the world series of poker and built all that up, but way more like marketing, right. Which is great for like a president, but I just don't know who we're going to get on a football level to replace Oliver Luck and a lot of movement with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of potential people that might be great for that. And I mean, there, there are some former uh, commissioners of college conferences that are, I think are still out there. I'd have to look them up. I know there was a couple, there was like one from the big 12 that might be an option. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think that they picked the right person and maybe it's a situation where Oliver Lux lawsuit gets filed away quickly and solved quickly. So maybe he, we can get him back. I think he would come back under a different ownership group. I think he would definitely come back. You don't seem to agree, but... Oh, I would do it. No, I'm saying I would do anything. I would do anything for Luck to come back. You would do anything? Well, I would I would be... I think that would be a huge, like, boost for, for us. Would you, would you send Oliver Luck a Mark Cast mask? I would send Oliver Luck... Yes, I would absolutely send Oliver Luck an XFL Mark Cast mask. How many more do we have to give away, like... Two, two more left. Well, so I've been doing five a week right now. First five of the week, and we'll, we'll you know, just for we'll do it for a couple of weeks. And so, yeah, so we've got we that we played it before, but we, you know, so so five this week would be great. I, I say we just roll through a couple of that and see. Okay. Most most people are accepting the the XFL cloth mask. We have the black gators and the white gators, but I think that XFL mask is a good like. Good so we're giving away, we're giving away five more this week. What we want you to do is uh, again the website address is ratethispodcast dot com slash xfl. Please log on to Radar Podcast and uh, send us proof of the rating, and we'll send you a mask. Your choice, gator or mask. All right, so before we get done with the XFL talk today, this, this is my big segment for the week. This is Reed's big, and, and I hope I hope this works today. We had problems with the screen sharing last time we tried this, so we're going to give it a shot. We're going for no edits. So fans of the podcast know our, our debacle with Cardell Jones, right? We tried Cardell Jones was on bookcameo.com for, I think, $40. We tried to have him do a, um, you know, congratulatory message, try to try to do like a plug for the Mark cast. Cause the joke was we were going to do it, edit it to be a plug of the Mark cast. We did it. Huge laughs, you know, hilarity, <laughs> everything else. And, uh, uh, it failed, right? We posted it. He blocked all of us, everything colossal failure. So I'm sitting there last week. You know, I, I can't get enough of this stuff. So I go back on Book Cameo. Uh, who is on Book Cameo? But number 69, DC Defenders, Cole Boozer. Okay. Cole Boozer, I think. This, this is this is our level, right? Maybe we're not at Cardell level yet. We're at Cole Boozer level. No, 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 no. Cardell's not at our level anymore. <laughs> well, that might that be. That was so soft. Yeah. S-A-W-F-T soft. Yeah, that was oh. bad. So, so I go on book cameo and, and I do it a hundred percent legit. I go, Hey, Cole Boozer. I want to send my friend, Paul, a congratulatory message. He hosts a brand new XFL podcast called the XFL Markcast. Okay. Everything just not hiding anything. Top it, top of the level. And so we're going to, we're going to share the screen here. Yeah. Uh, hey. And hey. it no edits, no edits, no edits. Yeah, I got it. And we're going to optimize screen share for video clip, and we're going to share this. And uh, so this is this is from Cole Boozer, number sixty nine. And I want you to figure out after we play this, I want you to figure out how we're going to share this on the on the Twitters. Okay. Hey, Paul Sanchez, this is Cole Boozer, DC Defender, number sixty nine. 
Congrats on starting the XFL podcast, XFL Market Cast. Thanks. Take care. Have stay safe. No, Cole. Cole. Hey, Paul Sanchez is Cole Boozer, DC Defender number sixty nine. Congrats on starting the XFL podcast, XFL Market Cast. Thanks. Take care. Have stay safe. So there you go. That's what we got. That's what we got. The Market Cast. Market Cast. Market cast. <laughs> couldn't even we're, get. We're, we're, we're reviewing XFL ad stocks. <laughs> couldn't, yes. couldn't even get Cole Boozer to do a real plug. So that is kind of where we're at. But okay. I figured you would get. Stop good, spending money. So, uh, but here's the question. So, do we? We need to figure out an episode, a title for this episode. Anyway, should it be like we stand Cole Boozer? Yeah, we stand Cole Boozer. We stand Cole Boozer, and if he if he retweets this, we'll uh, we'll. Um, We'll put a shirt in the store. We'll put a shirt. We stand Cole Boozer if he retweets the podcast. Okay. Okay. And here's what we'll do. Cole Boozer. What we're what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my pledge. I'm going to donate money to a charity of your choice for retweeting this. I'll do it. And I don't know if you're going to match me again on this read, but let's 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 donate to a charity of Cole's choice if he retweets this. Since Cardell Jones is too soft. To take a joke or retweet something or appreciate the love that we were given. And we were just it was like Reed's language of love is to make fun of things. Just That's what Reed us. does. Just don't block us. You don't need to retweet. Just don't block us. Jeez. So soft. We keep focusing on how soft you are. And so, you're a quarterback. So if yeah, I think if if Cole um <clears throat> retweets this, I would love to send, I would love to make and send him a we stan Cole Boozer shirt and we will donate. What did we say before? 125 a piece to a charity of Cole's 250, choosing. 250 total. 250 total. Cole Boozer. Uh, I, I don't know if you'll know how Twitter works because you don't know how book cameo works. I'm kidding. But if you if you retweet at XFL Mark on Twitter, uh, we'll 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 donate a donate to your charity if you're choosing. Yes. So there we go. So on the WWE talk now that we're done with XFL to round up the rest of the show. Yes, we. Well, I mean, we already talked about how Ryback wants says Vince only wants to get the logo over. So that, I mean, I think we talked about everything. Did you want to talk about anything WWE related? So yeah, Bobby Roode came back, and uh, and then um, what are we thinking about um, how they're pushing Keith Lee right now? Are they pushing him? Well, that's what I mean. Like, are we? Does it matter right now that Keith Lee came in and? Um, I don't know. I mean, Keith Lee came in. He was the former, right? He had both titles in NXT. They push him up to the WWE. And then now he was wrestling like Andrade, right? And just like a nothing and like a throwaway match. I, I think that's just like maybe just a squash match that they're doing. Cause they're, they're trying to break the whole thing up with Andrade and Zelina Vega. Now they want to move Zelina into active competition, basically with her fighting Asuka, you know, a couple of times. So clearly there's, <laughs> Oscar dance. <laughs> Please make a gif of that. Please make a gif of the Oscar dance. The thing about Oscar is like I ne- I didn't really think she was as, as attractive. Like now I think she's super attractive, and I'm like, oh, I I have a big crush on Oscar. Maybe it's the those videos she posts because like, she has a YouTube channel where she does like the ASMR stuff where she like fixes food and it's all it sounds like you know the the audio sound. I don't know this. This is wild. Yeah, it's like the audio sounds that help like relax you and stuff. I mean, it doesn't relax me, but like, it's just kind of adorable. It's the other. It's the other. It doesn't relax you. It excites you. No, it doesn't do that either. Um, it's just like it, it's it, it, she's so <clears throat> she's so adorable when she you know does these little cooking things and stuff, and I'm just like, oh, now I now I have a crush on Asuka. So undefeated anyway. for like two years in NXT, right? We saw her front row at the Palladium in LA. We did. We yeah. saw her and then don't we remember. Saw, don't remember much of it, but we did see it. Don't remember much at all. I just remember the security guard going, "Stand back!" I'm like, "Dude, there's like three feet in between me and the fence. You need to calm the f down. This is the wrestling show, friend. I paid money to be here. Don't talk to me like that." Um, do you think that Ray Mysterio's daughter? Do you think she's going to end up with Murphy? Yeah, because that's that's how these things work. How upset do you think Seth Rollins is that this is where his career is right now? I mean, I don't know. He's me. <laughs> he kind of he kind of made his own bed when he went on Twitter and started being a real douchebag about things. 
talking stuff to, you know, talking crap to, uh, who was it that he was talking crap to? Zach Sabre Jr. Yeah. Uh, bank accounts and stuff. Like he, he, he did this himself. He kind of hurt himself with his big, with his Twitter fingers, you know, trigger fingers turn into Twitter fingers and he's running his mouth on Twitter. And now people don't like him and there's no heat in this whatsoever. I mean, crowd or not, no one would care about this stupid, this whole thing. See, I think that whole thing is setting up to where, um, she rolls with Murphy because she slapped Dominic on raw. I guess that's what happened. And then did you see that stuff about Alexa bliss? No, because Alexa bliss was engaged to Murphy. So kayfabe, she was like, shoot your shot, bro at Murphy about uh Ray's daughter. Just basically kayfabing, you know, are they not together anymore? Or is she, no, they broke up a okay. long time. So ago. in real life, but they were in real life, they were together. Yeah. In real life, they're no longer together. Okay. They ended their engagement. So she like kayfabe was like, shoot your shot, bud. And people were coming after Alexa bliss. They were like, she's a teenager. Damn it. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh my gosh, it worked. It worked because people believed this fake storyline was real. Wow. So they were like, they were like talking about how perverted buddy Murphy is apparently for going after, I guess she's like 19 now. Yeah. Uh, Ray's daughter's 19. But it's yeah, all storyline. I mean, it's just dumb. It's like they just can't figure out what to do with Rey Mysterio. You have one of the most talented legends of, of um, uh, Lucha Libre wrestling like in the world, and you have him in like this family soap opera stuff with his wife and then daughter and son. It's like crazy that that's yeah. all you have to come up with him for. This is one person who could have benefited from a heel turn. A heel Rey Mysterio would have been money. I would have been there for that. I would be like, okay, this is interesting. This is different. Just something. I just, but it's, it just, I mean, they haven't known what to do with them for 20 years. I mean, they've no, they've had them for how long has he been with the company? I mean, forever since 2000. Yeah, for a while, 15 years uh, off and on, you know, he's, he had like a couple of years off where he didn't, where he's on Lucha underground stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a guy that, you know, he's super marketable and They've talked about it. Conan's talked about it on his podcast where he doesn't understand why they haven't taken the mask off Ray yet. Because, Ray, you know, like we've seen, we've seen Ray without a mask. Like if you watch WCW in the late 90s and early 2000s, you've seen Ray without his mask. Like we know what he looks like. He's a good looking guy. So um, Conan doesn't understand why they haven't taken his mask off yet. Maybe that's, maybe they're building to something here where it's like, Ray and Dominic, and then you know Dominic beats Ray, and Ray takes off his mask and hands it over to Dominic. I don't, I don't know what's happening. Dominic what has happen. no, there is zero money in Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> he's, he, I think he's talented in the ring, but I don't think the charisma's there. No, I don't think charisma's there at all. No. But that was it. I mean, there wasn't a lot. I, I was watching. Did Retribution do anything? I mean, it's no. They're they're in quarantine right now. In like real life. Mm hmm. Really. Mm hmm. Okay. I don't know that. Or so they weren't on the show. Someone got sick. They were exposed. Oh. All had negative tests, but they're keeping them in quarantine for 14 days as opposed to the five that they say you need to do. Well, maybe they realize that whole gimmick isn't over. Maybe. T bar and slap jaw, nuts, whatever. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh my God. It's, uh, it's <laughs> The, the the funniest thing was that one of them tweeted about how because the whole thing is is they're this like anti-authority whatever and they they came in and like blew up tvs and cut up the ring and destroyed everything and so then wwe gave them um contracts right they they signed them like that's what you do when people mess up your show they give you contracts <laughs> yeah so so someone was tweeting and, and one of the guys t-bar whatever goes well, they signed us because it cost them less money to sign us than the, the than the destruction we were causing behind the scenes, right? Like if we were causing, you know, let's say ten thousand dollars of destruction every week, and they signed us, and so then Chris Jericho tweets to them, just, huh? <laughs> and I was like, that is the best reaction to that storyline because it just doesn't make sense at all. Why would you sign the anti, whatever authority? But that always happens. Yeah, that yeah. happened with your Nexus too. Killed the Nexus. Yeah, but they killed the Nexus. They're going to kill this, too. This is this is over. within the, b Before the year's over. This is going to be done. Well, now at the quarantine, I wouldn't be surprised if they're done. I mean... We're going to take our masks off to show that we have other masks on. It's so stupid. Yeah. So stupid. Oh, well. Well, uh, I think that was it. I think yep. we did good. 
So next week we'll have more XFL coverage to talk about, and then we'll save our WWE toward the end. So if you just want to stop and uh, I got one, one thing I want to say though. Love it. Yeah. Okay. When, when, when you talk about what van calls you on, just, just leave the, the off the, off the record stuff off it because people are like sitting there going, well, what did he share off the record? I want to know. Good stuff. Uh, Cause I'm curious too. And you tease people every day, every week with this van called, and he's told me some stuff off the record that I'm not going to tell you, but I know you won't know. You'll never know. Ha ha ha. Just tell us the stuff that you can say the van tells you. Okay. Van the man, our number one fan. We, I, I posted talking about how, if we don't get our season, we talked, we, we did the whole breakdown about the cardboard cutouts. Were we going to get the cardboard cutouts? We kind of made fun of it, whatever. Uh, and then I said, but if we don't get our seats, I'm going to riot. Right. So I posted on Facebook 30 seconds later, Van texts me, riot on, brother. I'm with you. It's like, I go, what are you talking about? He goes, well, you just posted the thing on Facebook. I'm like, oh, I just like, you are. We're on it. So Van is with us. Has he got notifications set for you? Probably. I would. I mean, if I was Van. Van the man, number one fan. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's all I got. Google Docs empty. So I think we killed it. Google Doc Doc is empty. Uh, If I had my soundboard on, I'd give any applause for emptying that Google Doc because... That is my favorite part of the week, emptying that Google Doc. Oh, did you wait real quick? And we, I don't even know if we could pull this up. Did you see the thing about the NFL players talking about the blimp? No. Oh my God. This, hang on. I vamp for a second. Vamping again. So apparently we need to talk about one more thing that regards, relates to the NFL blimp story. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the XFL Markcast. We've kind of packed this. I looked over the time right now, and we've gone over a minute. Uh, I'm sorry, not a minute, an hour. I'm glad I goofed up there so I could just add more words because I really like the way that my voice sounds. So, Creed, is the NFL Blimp article ready now? Yeah, so should we just play the audio, I think? It's weird. It's all good. It's uh, no, just dead silence. You can hear the blimp. That's how quiet it is. It sounds like somebody's flying over. Yeah, that's what it's doing. It's going to be like, it's hovering right now. If you want to keep it technical, it's just chilling no, up there. It is flying overhead. It's hovering over top. It's not flying. Oh, it's not flying? No, so so that, that thing up in the air is not flying? It's like all the flying. Hey, folks. So this is JJ Watt and uh, Brandon Dunn of the Texans, and they're having this debate about whether the Goodyear blimp is flying or hovering over this, over the arena. Can you hear this? I just did hey, now. So he's asking other people. So you're telling me that thing in the air is not flying? What is hovering? Is hovering a form of flying? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I just I saw that on CBS this morning. I was dying. It was like this minute long discussion about whether the Goodyear blimp is flying or hovering over the NFL stadium. Thank you. It's flying. Propellers push it forward. It's not staying in one place. <laughs> but but I think that's a good spot to end the Mark Cast on today. Very good. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> 